going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the DFS OG's podcast, talking everything week 15. We're running out of time here this season. Wrapping up, but we are back, as always, to cover you not only on the main site this week. We're going to throw a little bonus content. We're going to get some quick thoughts on the two-game Saturday slate as well. We know we get late in the year. Uh, NFL starts moving games to Saturday. So no game by game, no, no bunch of stuff. We'll just give you uh, some quick thoughts on that game. I am your host, as always, Chris Beermakers Fan Prince, joined as I am every single week by my boys, my fellow OGs, Head Chopper, and notorious Derek, let's start with you, buddy. How's things? How was week 14? And uh, welcome in to the week 15 pod. Yeah, everything's good on my end. Uh, pretty much broke even to the dollar last week. I typically make one main lineup and then mix in a couple uh, tournament lineups here and there. But uh, I was struggling with my main lineup, so I decided to make a bunch of tournament lineups. Turns out my main lineup uh, was the best one of the bunch. So basically it just paid for uh, my contests um, that I lost on. So Overall, pretty decent week. Um, you know, break even is better than losing. Uh, how did you guys do? I had a pretty good week, and that's funny how that works. Like my li- my first lineup generally is the best lineup I make. You, you start branching off, and you start trying to cover different things. And I need to get a little little piece of that game and a piece of this guy. So uh, good week overall for me. And we're coming off probably the game of the year. I mean, we we're, we record on Tuesdays. Uh, that Baltimore Cleveland game chop not not only a hell of a game. But how about that ending? I mean, how much money was swung on that point spread? I mean, it was three, three and a half, you know, wherever you happen to look. But either way, a safety at the end uh, ends up giving Baltimore that cover. But a great game. Chop, how are you? How was week 14? And uh, welcome in, my man. Yeah, it's good to be here. I, uh, I, was, I had about a break-even week, and I consider that pretty successful considering – that I uh, did the Aaron Jones thing, loaded up on Aaron Jones in cash and in GPPs, and that was just a terrible, terrible result. So for me to break even, I feel, I feel pretty decent about it. So we'll, we'll take that as a win. Yeah, I mean, break even is always uh, – you, you move on to the next week, and this week always fun. Uh, I know the championships are, are coming this week. FanDuel always does the, the fan championship, a $3.5 million prize pool. One million to first, so they've been running satellites for that all season long. So I've been gobbling those up. A two hundred fifty dollar entry. It looks like it may overlay. It's early in the week, but uh, something to keep an eye on. But uh, week fifteen out. Before we get into things, before we talk Saturday, you guys, a little, little breaking news here. We can't go into everything. We're still working out some of the details. But all I'll say is this: If you guys love the podcast, you like what we do here uh, on the DFS OGs. Then we got some good news for you. And again, I, I wish I could give you more details on it. I'll leave it at that. You guys want to want to hit on anything there? Or are you ready to talk some football? I'm I'm quiet as a mouse. Over there. I'm not saying nothing, man. <laughs> yeah, good tease. Good unfortunately, tease. we got nothing to say yet. But stay tuned. Uh, stay with us here, and as we go along, hopefully, we can give you more on that. But excited uh, about the future of the pod. So uh, we'll leave it at that. So let's get into this quick Saturday slate. Just a two gamer. A Buffalo at Denver, Carolina at Green Bay. Uh, both totals sitting right around 50 here. Uh, both games around a touchdown favorites uh, on Buffalo and Green Bay. So, guys, quick thoughts here. Again, we won't spend too much time here, but I know people are going to be playing that. There's some big tournaments out there. Uh, so, Derek, let's start with you here. Uh, any big thoughts here? News-wise, uh, nothing overly huge. I think Christian McCaffrey, obviously, uh, the big domino. They're expecting him to possibly be back here. So, uh, hit on that. Can we pay the 9,400 here on Devontae Adams? Uh, DJ Moore may be back as well. And then the, the early game, uh, Noah Fant questionable and John Brown may be making his return here. So Derek, I give the floor to you here. Quick thoughts here on this Saturday slate. Yeah, really nice two game slate. Uh, I'm kind of excited for it. Uh, you mentioned the Packers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers has a legit case to be the MVP this year. And uh, you know, he knows that. So I think he's going to be calling his number uh, once again. Uh, he has been pretty much any uh, or all season. And uh, we know he likes throwing to Devontae Adams. He has uh, eight t- or scored a touchdown in eight straight games. He has 12 touchdowns during that stretch. So um, if you are playing those two together, you're going to have to save elsewhere. Uh, not a ton of injuries. Like you mentioned, if McCaffrey's back, it sounds like DJ Moore is going to be back. And then uh, you mentioned John Brown as well. So um, if you're going to play uh, the stack of uh, Rodgers and Adams, it's going to be tough to do. But it's certainly one of the most intriguing ones. I think the value is going to come from Denver. Um, so I will be paying close attention to that uh, wide receiver cornerback matchup chart. Whoever uh, Tredavious White is expected to follow around 
probably going to be off of him and uh, target the other receivers for Denver, maybe even a little Noah Fant action, assuming uh, he's able to suit up. Um, I think he's done with the illness. So, um, yeah, those are my thoughts there. Uh, Carolina is going to be tough uh, if they are completely healthy, um, but it's going to be a pretty good matchup. They're probably going to be trailing against the Packers. So uh, if you can figure out those pieces, you'll probably be in pretty good shape. Yeah, for sure. I, I did a little early building, just just kind of messing around before the show. And if you throw in McCaffrey and Adams chop, you're, you're only left with about 4,500 per spot. So hit on both those guys. Uh, if he's back, which one do you prefer getting those lineups? I know Aaron Jones stung you last week. Are, are you willing to go back there? Uh, in this matchup against Carolina and the rest of your thoughts here real quick on this Saturday slate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely willing to go back. I wish, I wish this game was on the main slate. I would go back to Aaron Jones It's going to make it rather easy for people to go to him now on a little two gamer. If I was, uh, my, my general thoughts on the, on the thing are that, um, I'm probably going to be looking for my cheaper pieces in the Buffalo Denver game and my major pieces in the Carolina green Bay game. Totals are about the same, but I really favor a higher outcome in the Carolina Green Bay game. So I'm going to be loading up salary wise over there and going cheap. I can get the cheaper pieces in the Denver Buffalo game with the wide receivers, I think. And, and uh, that's kind of the way I want to build that. I think that Carolina Green Bay game is going to be pretty good. And I, th- I think there's a, a tad bit of a letdown spot here for, for Buffalo and, and Josh Allen. Yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, you, you look at some of the value in that first game, and we saw Hamler, two touchdowns, and only, only had three targets. Uh, I, I get it, but a big play guy, uh, if Brown's back or not, you know, you have Beasley, Gabriel Davis, cheap options there, uh, some other cheap pieces on the Denver side. So I agree. Uh, and, and Carolina Green Bay, obviously, uh, that's where you're going to want to spend your money. So uh, let's let's do the betting picks here, though. We, we will do some no, – who, who doesn't like betting on a Saturday? So uh, Chop, we'll go to you here first here. You got Buffalo minus six and a half in Denver and the total at 50. Give me the under in this game. I also like the under here. I I just don't know how much this Denver offense, uh, they look good against Carolina, no doubt. But uh, I don't know that they're going to be able to do a ton here uh, in this one. So I like the under here as well. Derek, what do you got? I'm going to take Buffalo. I'm a believer. All right. And then second game, Derek, we'll start with you. We have Green Bay uh, minus eight and a half here at home, 51 on that total. I like uh, a lot of the offensive pieces in this one, so give me the over. I'm going over as well. I think this one shoots out. Green Bay is pretty much putting up 30 a game. I think Carolina will be happy to oblige and put up uh, at least their fair share here, so I like the over as well. Chop, what do you got? Uh, Yeah, I do like the over, but I'm going Green Bay. All right, Green Bay. Yeah, don't force it. So we'll, we'll cover that real quick. If you put in the parlay, did not uh, did not end up winning last week. I think we split uh, two and two uh, on our consensus bets. But all in all, we all had a good week. Uh, we all won seven games. So seven and five last week for each and every one of us. So uh, Derek and Chop remain uh, in a tight race here, 76 each. I'm still lagging behind at 64 wins. So Close race, few weeks left uh, for somebody to take that down. So let's move on. Main slate, 11 games here. Not a great split. Uh, Eight in the early window, three in the late window. So let's start with Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Tampa Bay coming off that win at home against Minnesota. Atlanta, tough loss out in L.A. to the Chargers. So injury-wise, Ronald Jones uh, dealing with almost the same situation Godwin was. A a little bit of a finger issue, but they're not sure he's going to be able to play. So uh, Leonard Fournette, 4.5K. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, 4K. Any interest there? What do we do with these Bucks receivers? I mean, they were all kind of disappointing. When Scotty Miller leads the way, uh, that's not a great sign. So, uh, Derek, we'll start with you. Thoughts there on the, on the Tampa Bay side. Atlanta, we know uh, Julio Jones is questionable. A word of him possibly being shut down for the season. And Calvin Ridley, once again, uh, just tore it up. Eight for 124 and a touchdown uh, without Julio. So, Thoughts on the receivers, thoughts on the Tampa Bay running back situation, and overall thoughts here, Bucks and Falcons. Yeah, given the injuries and the total for this game, it feels like one that we should have a lot of interest in. But, I mean, Tampa Bay is just so hard to stack because, like you mentioned, uh, they have four good wideouts in Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski has actually been pretty good. And then, you know, like you mentioned, Scotty Miller scored that long touchdown last week. So it's kind of hard to pair up Brady with any of these guys or at least feel good about it. Um, if you are playing Brady, you're probably going to want to pair him up in tournaments, but I just don't know 
which way I would lean. You know, Evans has been getting more touchdowns than the other three, so I would probably lean towards him. Running backs, yeah, Leonard Fournette was a surprise inactive Sunday morning. Uh, everyone kind of got on Ronald Jones. Ended up having 20 touches or so. Um, and even before, you know, we saw that Fournette was going to be out, Bruce Arians said he wanted to get him all those touches. So if he's going to be out, uh, it's going to be probably Fournette getting the start. But I uh, definitely want to keep an eye on that situation. Whoever does start, it's not a great matchup anyway. I mean, Atlanta's been pretty good, uh, especially um, over the last month or so. So I don't know if uh, I'll end up playing that chalk. We just see the chalk cheap running backs fell time and time again. Last week was DeAndre Washington. Uh, for Miami then on the other side yeah Calvin Ridley uh, firmly in play if Julio Jones is out again um, in his career he's averaged 15 points playing alongside Julio 22 fantasy points when Julio is out uh, Russell Gage has been uh, decent enough and then uh, won't be going to Hayden Hurst over his last four games he has a total of six catches combined and I uh, still don't want any pieces of this running game yeah for a for a 50 point total chop I, I'm kind of with Derek I don't really Nothing on the Tampa Bay side. I mean, if Leonard Fournette's going to be chalk, th this matchup is terrible, like you mentioned. I just Atlanta's been so good against running backs this season. Uh, quite a turn from the last few seasons. So really only Calvin Ridley for me. I, I think that's a, a definitely a play I'm going to be looking into uh, and getting in a lot of my lineups this week, especially against Tampa, who we know is good against the run as well. And our boy Gurley, it just, it stick a fork in him, Chop. He, he, he looks done out there. So Ridley for me doesn't sound like much more for Derek. What do you think here, Tampa and Atlanta? Yeah, this is, both both these guys were very disappointing last week. Especially that Atlanta Chargers game was just horrifically way underwhelming compared to what we thought it was going to be. So, so probably a good prime bounce back spot if we all got that bad uh, taste in our mouth, and that's usually what happens. But I'm with you, like. Can't play Hayden Hurst. I mean, he's just been garbage pretty much all year long. And uh, Julio, yeah, I would imagine they shut him down. Guy in my league tried to trade Julio to me last week because we don't even uh, – somebody didn't even set the trade deadline in the league. So, like, you could still make them. Even in the playoffs, you can make trades. But guy tried to pawn Julio off on me, and I was like, you know, like Julio's not even going to play this year, so I don't want that. Calvin Ridley's okay. All right, I get that. And Matt Ryan's been just straight garbage here for, like, a month now, so – yeah, not much on Atlanta. Tampa Bay, I have a little bit more, a little bit more liking to probably, uh, man, probably going to go to some more Chris Godwin over everybody else in this game. I, li I like a little Chris Godwin. Not going to jump on the Ronald Jones. I got the news just like everybody else. You know, Leonard Fournette's out. Let's all jam Jones in there. And, man, thank God he got the touchdown. Otherwise, that would have been a horrific game for him too. But I feel like this is a Chris Godwin. Like, I'm tired of taking shots on Antonio Brown. He's been okay. <laughs> He catches a few passes. He hasn't got loose. Mike Evans, I still don't think, is the preferred target for Tom Brady. It just doesn't fit his skill set. I'm waiting on that Chris, Brown, Chris Godwin breakout. I think this is going to be it. So give me, give me some Godwin, man. I was going to ask about your hierarchy. You've been uh, Antonio Brown on the, on the top of the charts here for a few weeks. So it sounds like Godwin for you. Uh, I don't hate it. I mean, taking a stab on one of these guys. But, you know, if Scotty Miller is going to be involved. We know Gronk's involved. It's just a muddy mess. So what was the offer for Julio? We, we won't, we won't, we're going to talk here, your playoff matchup towards the end, uh, if we have some time, but what, what was the ask for Julio? I just want to know. Man, first of all, he was, he's all trying to be very, I'm not going to mention no names just in case you're listening. I don't want the rest of the league. Well, the league will know anyway. Well, they all know. Yeah. Yeah. So six right, well, they people will know. Me. That's all right. I won't, I won't mention no names, but the basic thing was, Hey man, there's nothing in the rules against this, so you want to do this? We'll do a series of one-week trades, and you know, you give me, you give me Justin Jefferson and this guy, and you take back, you take back Devonte for one week. You rent him, and then you give him back to me, but you keep Julio for the year. Uh, all kinds of weird oh, stuff, damn. but uh. yeah, I was like, man, I mean, no, I can't go that route because you want me to keep Julio for the rest of the year. Julio's not even going to play, and I gotta, I, I'm feeling pretty good about Justin Jefferson, and so uh, I'm going to pass on that, man. Yeah, but, that's yeah. pretty complicated there, man. That's, <laughs> yeah, it was guy, really, he was really – re this guy really skirts the rules of the league every year. Like, every Aww. year this guy's finding <laughs> some – like, as long as it's not, you know, totally, like, uh, illegal, he's, he's going to push the envelope. So he's one of those guys. Hey, I got a soft spot for for some of the, you know, you're you're doing what it takes to win within the rules. That, that's all right, but uh, yeah, just uh, that's pretty funny there though. 
Uh, let's get a pick here. Tampa Bay shot minus five and a half uh, on the road. That total at 50 and a half. Yeah, just because I think we're all underselling it. I'm going to take the over here. Uh, I'm going to go to Derek. I don't have anything that jumps out here. Derek, what do you got? I'm going to take the under. All right, so not going to force uh, anything here. You guys are in two different picks. I'm going to say Atlanta rises up and keeps this game close. So I'll, I'll take Atlanta at home with the points. All right, next game, Seattle traveling to Washington. We saw Seattle uh, pretty much beat down the Jets. Uh, nobody really stood out, though. There, there was, you know, Russell Wilson, yeah, he did his thing, but uh, nobody really jumped off the page there. But uh, 40 points, you, you thought there'd be a bigger game from somebody. But uh, so be it. Washington, big win uh, out in San Francisco and, and leading the NFC East here. So the injuries on their side of the ball, obviously we saw Alex Smith uh, leave that game. Sounds like he should be good to go. They said if he needed him to go back in, uh, he would have been able to. So I, I think he'll be back in there. Uh, Antonio Gibson, obviously a big piece. He's still questionable. Uh, and then Terry McLaurin was kind of disappointing uh, in that game. So I think it could be a good bounce back uh, for him. But uh, let's go to Chop here. Kind of a low total here, Chop. Uh, Washington, very good defensively. Seattle playing much better defensively. What do we do here? Uh, in our DFS lineups. Yeah, I mean, Seattle's the same old guys every year. I, I mean, uh, same, same old thing every, every week. You, you just, you know, you, you can play Russell. He's fine. You can definitely should be thinking about DK as the number one guy because Lockett, Lockett is the clear second guy. And then you could always get lucky with the touchdowns out of Chris Carson. That's what they are. That's, that's what they kind of bring every week. And this week's no different. But uh, Washington is the intriguing one. If Alex Smith sits. If Alex Smith sits, I want some Terry McLaren. I want a lot of Terry McLaren. And if Alex Smith plays, it'll probably be more J.D. McKissick for me, and I'll probably be on a complete fade of Terry McLaren. So that's all going to hinge on the quarterback. I don't want either one of the quarterbacks, but if Haskins is in there, I feel a lot more comfortable with Terry McLaren having a really good game this week. And if Alex Smith is in there, I think he kind of anchors the big players down and then – he checks off to Logan Thomas and checks off to J.D. McKissick, and that's all I can That's all I can do. Yeah, if it is, Smith, I kind of agree with you. Like, this just seems like an ugly game that I don't really have much that, that jumps off the page. I, I like McLaurin a little bit more than you if Smith's in there. Uh, I agree on Haskins. We know those two have a connection going back uh, to Ohio State. We just saw him get peppered with targets uh, last season with, with Haskins in there. Uh, Gibson, obviously the big domino here. If he's out, uh, McKissick should once again be involved. But – uh, Derek, any more optimism here? It's kind of ugly. Uh, you can pull any, pull any gems out of here for us. I agree with pretty much everything Chop said and that, uh, you know, you want McLaurin if, end, if it ends up being Haskins. But, um, you know, he's had a string of tough matchups, uh, and he has had a couple decent games with Alex Smith under center. So I would still have some interest. Uh, Seattle dead last in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. So I still have a little bit of interest there. Obviously, McKissick would be a strong play if Gibson is out again. And then nobody has wanted to play DK Metcalf in good matchups. And now he's in a bad matchup and he's 8,600. So I don't think he's going to get very much ownership at all. I'll take his chances in any matchup, especially in competitive games where, you know, they're going to let Russ cook a little bit more than usual. So uh, I'll have some skinny stacks with Metcalf and McLaurin, but for the most part, um, not a ton of interest in the game as a whole. All right, Derek, we got Seattle minus five and a half here. Road favorites total at 44 and a half. I like this game to stay close, so I will take Washington. Um, and I know we'd like to build a little parlay card here to have some fun with it, but uh, Adam Levitan, you know, friend of the pod, posted a thing about, um, you know, how much sports books make on different types of bets. And single outcome bets, usually between 3 to 4%. Uh, parlay bets is up to like 15%. So for all the novice bettors out there, just be careful uh, when it comes to betting parlays. I know they're fun. I know we like to chase the big payouts, but they're typically the worst bets you can make. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, they, we, we half joke with, with these, with these yeah. parlays. I hope you guys understand that. I mean, we like to have fun, and our record's been pretty good on, on our consensus picks, but I agree completely. I mean, it, yeah, they're fun, entertaining. You know, if you're throwing a few dollars on something crazy, sure, but uh, in the long haul, it's a, it's a losing proposition. So, uh, that being said, I agree on Washington. Uh, give me the give me the points here. They're playing some good football. They've gone on the road and beat some good teams. I think they can at least hang in this game, and it would not shock me uh, if they outright win this game. So I don't even hate the money line here, but uh, I will take the five and a half here with the football team. Chop, what do you got? Uh, yeah, it feels like a feels like a game Seattle is going to win this and and win it walking away to me. So I'm gonna go Seattle. 
Moving on to the NFC North, Chicago and Minnesota. Chicago, big win there at home against Houston. And we, and we pretty much saw big games out of all three of their, their big dogs. Trubisky looked good. Uh, the connection with Allen Robinson was there. We saw David Montgomery break that huge run uh, early on, kind of quiet after that, but still a big game. Uh, Minnesota, kind of disappointing. You know, they looked good in the beginning of that game uh, at Tampa, but uh, ended up coming up short. So no major injuries on either side. Uh, Alexander Madison, Kyle Rudolph, questionable on the Minnesota side, both minor injuries. So uh, Chicago, who, who do you trust here, Derek? Is it the passing game? Is it Montgomery? And then Minnesota, we saw some big games out of the receivers. These two teams just played uh, not too long ago. Uh, Justin Jefferson was almost his coming out party, 135 yards uh, in that game. Adam Thielen caught two touchdowns. And Dalvin Cook, 30 carries uh, in that game. The Bears held him uh, 296 yards. But uh, clearly they want to get this guy the ball 25, 30-plus times here. So who do you trust on the Minnesota side, the receivers uh, or the running backs? So a lot here. What do you got, Bears, Vikings? Even though this game doesn't have the highest total, um, it's one that you can easily stack because both these offenses are so concentrated. For the Bears, we know it's going to be Trubisky, David Montgomery, Allen Robinson. Uh, Montgomery, 28, 27, and 28 fantasy points over the last two or three games. Consistently playing on 70-plus percent of the snaps. Another pretty decent matchup for him. Allen Robinson, again, led the NFL in targets last year with Trubisky under center over the last three starts that he's made with uh, Trubisky. 23 receptions, 272 yards, three touchdowns. So I like him to have another big game, especially against his secondary. And, uh, yeah, I don't mind playing, you know, Montgomery or Robinson, just uh, probably not in the same lineup. And then for the Vikings, uh, another concentrated offense. We know Davin Cooks can get 25-plus touches. Uh, and we know when they're going to throw the ball, it's going to go to Jefferson and Thielen. So uh, I have interest in this game as a whole. I know uh, the Bears have a pretty good defense, but uh, Vikings playing at home, uh, indoors, which I always like. So I like this game, uh, and I'll just plan to stack it up a number of different ways. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I mean, it's not the highest total, like you mentioned, and, and two teams that have been known for their defense over the years, but a, a lot of intriguing pieces in this one. So, Chop, let's go to you. Do you share the optimism here, or are you gonna you're going to pour some cold water on us? No, I think, uh, I mean, for that price tag, Dalvin Cook will be very limited in my exposure, but I like this passing game a lot. So uh, I like Jefferson. I like Thielen, uh, you know, the first time around Jefferson. So the second time around, maybe it's more Thielen for me, but, but I like them both. And then a uh, the sneaky part of it is the tight end. I'm hoping Kyle Rudolph sits out again, because I will go, with, I'll go to Irv Smith again. And I think he's a really solid play if Rudolph sits out. So I like the passing game. Cook is not as much, but Chicago. Yeah. They've got, they've got a big three. They got Trubisky. They've got Montgomery. They got Robinson. They've had good matchups. For the past few weeks, they're continuing to get pretty good matchups here for the fantasy playoffs, if you're into that kind of thing. And uh, I think they're going to keep on. I mean, Allen Robinson's a machine, no matter who his quarterback is. So, you know, that's all good. And, and Montgomery, yeah, he's impressed me, man. The offensive line's playing better. He's taking advantage of it. So if you're going to get really, really sneaky, and it's really sneaky, and it's because the position is so bad this year outside of a couple guys, Cole Komet might be a sleeper this week, too. Imagine Allen Robinson with a good quarterback. I mean, he, he's probably in the Devontae Adams, uh, Michael Thomas uh, stratosphere. I mean, he, he's close as it is right now. But uh, like you said, a machine just continues to get it done. So uh, maybe some, maybe Trubisky finally figured it out. We'll see. We've seen this before uh, where he's strung together a few games and then he's fallen on his face. But uh, I do like this spot here for that offense against Minnesota. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and lock in the Bears plus three and a half here. Uh, so, Chop, let's go to you. Three and a half, like I said, in favor of Minnesota. Total at 46 and a half. Yeah, throwing me that extra half a point there. I got to take Chicago. All right, Derek, three for three. Or are you going to mix it up on us? <laughs> yeah, three for three uh, for the Bears. And I like the commit call by Chop. Um, his playing time it has increased each of the last three weeks, and he's got 14 targets over the last two games. So, uh, sneaky at 3K. Absolutely. We love it. Get some value in there. I like the Irv Smith call as well. Tight end is such a dumpster fire. I mean, we, we have some of the bigger names on the slate, but if you can save some money there, I uh, hope for a touchdown. I, I don't hate it. So next game, another big total, Houston and Indy. Houston, we just talked about uh, disappointing loss in Chicago, to say the least. Absolutely uh, got destroyed in that game. Indy uh, goes out to Vegas and gets a big win. So Houston side, Sounds like David Johnson should be back here. Uh, he traveled home to, to deal with a family issue. 
Uh, so he did not test positive. He just was a uh, more out of precaution in some of the league protocols. So he should be back. Brandon Cooks, sounds like he'll be a game-time decision uh, for Houston. So Indy side, no injuries there. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Chop, it, it continues to, to pour it on here. We saw him uh, have a good game against this team a couple weeks ago. T.Y. Hilton also continues to play well. Also had a big one. Uh, in that game and no Bradley Roby here for Houston. So which one of those guys do you trust? Maybe it's both of them. Taylor up to 7,200 Hilton at 5,500 Houston side. I know you mentioned your, your boy, Chad Hansen does it again. Uh, seven receptions on seven targets, uh, 56 yards there. Kuti finds the end zone, but only gets three targets in that game. So another good game here, chop, uh, I think a very stackable game, but uh, who stands out as guys you really want to go after this week? Yeah, it's a, uh... It's an interesting game. Uh, man, I just – I want to pull the trigger on Hilton and Taylor, but I just know what's going to happen when I finally do because I've been off of them Then they're going to – so, I, I don't know. It's tough. But, I mean, the only guys I even vaguely look at for Indianapolis are Taylor and Hilton. I don't want any of those other players. I don't even want Phillip Rivers right now. So, give Taylor credit, man. He's running hard behind that offensive line. He's gotten some good matchups and he's taking advantage of it. I think you could go back to him this week. I think you'd go back to Hilton. I'm not going to lock him in. I'm not totally, totally like sold on him just yet, but he's looked a lot better the last few weeks. He's getting great matchups and he's doing this. He's taking advantage too. Houston is the, is the tougher part. Well, we don't know what Brandon Cooks is going to do just yet. So, uh, we kind of got to wait on that one. If Cooks is out, I'll go back to the cheap wide receivers again. Hanson, QT, and uh, I'll probably sit out on Jordan Akins now. I think I've had enough of Jordan watching him in the, the last couple of games where he's just – I mean, talk about hands of stone, man. My God, I don't – that's rough. So I'm probably going to pass on Akins. And, uh, but, you know, if Brandon Cooks is active, I'm probably going to fade him too. But if he's not active, I'll go with the cheaper guys, QT and Hanson, and don't have any don't have any liking for the backfield. And honestly, I really don't have much liking for Deshaun Watson, unfortunately. Just the only reason I like the receivers is because they're so cheap. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, he has not been great here. We know this Indy defense uh, pretty solid. And I, I'm also – I like Taylor. I like Hilton. But I, I have that same kind of feeling. Like, I don't want to go all in on him. I kind of like when you, you walk out on, you know, Chop, you live in Texas. You may not know, but Derek knows. You know, a, a body of water freezes over, and you're not quite sure how thick the ice is, so you kind of you kind of wander out there, and uh, it starts cracking. You know, I'm a big dude, so the ice cracks a little bit easier. So that's the kind of feeling I, I get with these indie guys. They've been good. Uh, it certainly looks like Taylor has taken over the backfield. It uh, certainly looks like T.Y. is back, but – uh, a little bit of hesitancy, hesitancy, hesitancy here for me. Derek, your thoughts on those two guys? Uh, are you all in there? It's same kind of feeling. Uh, and then break this Houston side down. I know we have that Cooks injury kind of holding things up, but where do you stand with the rest of that offense? Man, I played Jordan Aikens last week in my main lineup. And uh, I know we've been saying he's got stone, stone hands, but um, he was wide open in the end zone. Watson hit him. It hit him in the shoulder pad. He didn't even see the ball. He was looking. I mean, I know the sun was right there, but I had to rewind just to see that I wasn't seeing things. It just, like, bounced off of him. So bad, so bad. Um, yeah, so I, I won't be going back there. I like Cooks if he's active, and then QT and Hanson both fine uh, if Cooks is out. Won't be going to the backfield. Um, I know it's a tough matchup for Deshaun Watson, but uh, 24 fantasy points or more in eight of his last 10 games. He just gets it done almost every single week. He's a king of garbage time. They should be trailing in this one, and it's indoors, so I do like him. Uh, and then you just pair him up with one of his wideouts. Uh, for the Colts, yeah, you guys mentioned it. Um, it's hard to pay a premium for Taylor. He's been so good. Um, his snap share continues to increase. He's had 26, 16, and 22 touches over the last three games. And the Texans, bottom four and DVOA against the run, yards allowed per carry, and defensive adjusted line yards. So they're going to get a ton going on the ground here, just a matter of whether or not you trust uh, you know, him breaking away from this timeshare. I think he can play him, um, but I don't know. It, it is tough to play him after you haven't played him the last few weeks. And then I've brought up a lot of basketball references on the show the last couple of weeks, and T.Y. Hilton is on the same page. He's calling himself Stephen Curry out there, stays oh. in the zone. I mean, I don't really know. Uh, the comps are a little bit strange for me, but um, hey, he's playing well uh, and he always torches the Texans. So I actually do like Hilton quite a bit. 
Um, I think it makes sense. I mean, they're going to score a bunch of points against this Texans team. They're one of the worst defenses, and they're playing at home, and uh, I think they can lock up their division maybe with the win. And, again, no Bradley Roby helps, so Hilton wants to compare himself to Steph Curry. It's fine. The grandma narrative didn't work. Maybe the basketball <laughs> one will. And I uh, just want to send a quick shout-out. We had a, a Twitter user help us out with our, our Hanson debate last week. We, we had everything mixed up, catching a predator, uh, baseball's DFS. So thank you to Sands Bubble Text on Twitter. Baseball's DFS was Chad Hancher to catch a predator, Chris Hanson. So we, we, we were close. So thank you for, <laughs> for getting, getting us on track there with, with our Hansons and Hanchers and, and elsewhere. So let's get to a pick here. Derek, we'll go to you. We got Colts minus seven and a half at home, another 50 and a half on the total. Watson garbage time to hit the over. All right, Chop, what do you got? I think Indianapolis is going to roll them. Give me Indy. I like the over here as well. I think there'll be some points scored in this game. So over 50 and a half. For me, next game, we got Detroit. Uh, tough loss to Green Bay. They hung in the game, but uh, ended up coming up short. Matthew Stafford uh, looks questionable here, so we'll keep an eye on that. Kenny Galladay, still questionable. Don't know only if we're going to see him the rest of the year, but uh, Stafford's out. Chase Daniel, 5K, yes or no on that one. Uh, Tennessee, the big story here, Derrick Henry in December. We, we know it's just, just a, it, it's a matter of how, how much you guys willing to pay for Derrick Henry. You know, are, are, Do you want to pay this price here? How high would his price have to be to not play him uh, in this matchup at home against Detroit? One of the worst rundies uh, in the league. Huge favorites here coming off that massive game against Jacksonville. What would that price have to be, Derek, for you to say, nah, I'm good on Derek Henry? Uh, I mean, I don't think he's a lock and load play just because he doesn't catch that many passes. And 9,500 oh, on DraftKings. Right. I was just going to say, <laughs> I, we don't need them. But he's going to run for 200 yards and three touchdowns. I don't so, need them receptions. I know, but if he gets 102 touchdowns, that's only 25 fantasy points. I mean, I still think he'll get it. And uh, he's, you know, obviously going to win the rushing title. I think he's got like 180-yard advantage right now over Dalvin Cook. I like him. I like the matchup. I like everything. Um, the only concern for me is the price point. And at the moment, we don't have a ton of value that's opened up. So I'll probably end up playing. I played him last week against the Jaguars. Certainly treated me well. Um, but yeah, I'm just saying at 9,500, you got to do a lot if you're not catching passes. And uh, he typically does in December. But if you want to get some leverage, uh, A.J. Brown, even Corey Davis is a bounce back spot. He was pretty popular last week. I think you can do it. You know, you can beat Detroit through the air or on the ground. And the Lions, if Stafford's out, they're just a full fade for me. Um, they don't sound very optimistic that he's going to be able to play. Chase Daniel, I know he's going to pop in the projection models as a good value, but I just don't think uh, I can do it. So uh, I'm going to be fading the Lions. See, I, I, I think I do like Chase Daniel here. I mean, this Tennessee defense has been terrible. The, we, the Lions are likely playing from behind. I mean, it's a 10.5-point spread here. So uh, I don't think it's the worst play in the world. It's just a matter of who do you pair him up with, our boy Hawkinson, uh, that can't hit a ceiling. Is it Marvin Jones? But I do have more interest uh, in that Detroit offense. And uh, Chop, same question for you. Uh, you're obviously in the same camp as me, Derek Henry, squarely in play this week. What does that price have to be for you to say no thanks in this matchup? I'm not sure, but I, I don't think 9,500 is it. So, I'll, I'll, I mean, I get he doesn't catch many passes, but uh, – He's going to uh, demolish some yards and, and, you know, like is there a better bet in all of football to score two touchdowns from a, from a running back or a wide receiver or tight end? I don't think so. So yeah, I think he's going to crush again. Uh, 9,500 is not enough for me. I, I'm sure when he crushes this week, next week he'll be over 10K and it'll make you really think about it. But, yeah, he's going to crush it in this matchup. So I, uh, I'm going to be playing him. But then again – it's hard to get away from any of these guys. A.J. Brown's in a great matchup. Corey Davis has been great this year and got a great matchup. So, I don't know. And Tannehill, every once in a while, when you think it's going to be Derrick Henry, all of a sudden, Tannehill comes up with four touchdowns. He's super efficient. So, they're all in play. It's just a matter of uh, how much you want to put on each lineup with, with those guys. On the flip side, yeah, I will not have Chase Daniels if he ends up being the starting quarterback. So, I don't want, I don't want that. I uh, fell for DeAndre Swift last week. <clears throat> My thought process was new coaching staff. They're going to get their best players involved. You know, they kind of turned Matthew Stafford loose a little bit. So maybe it's a changing of the guard. So they're going to turn Swift loose. And that really didn't happen. So 
maybe they are really protecting him from that concussion right now. So with all that being said, I really don't want to play Swift if he's going to be slightly limited. And I just don't think with if Chase Daniels is at the helm, I don't want a wide receiver either. So I'm I'm really I'm really bearish on Detroit this week. All right, and, and I forget which one of you guys said it last week, but it almost feels like a repeat with Tennessee that you, you want once you either want some Henry or you want some of the receivers. And I agree uh, with both of you. The receivers, you know, A.J. Brown's been phenomenal. Uh, Corey Davis, great bounce back spot. Tannehill, uh, capable of a four-touchdown game on, on limited attempts. So uh, if you are getting away from Henry, I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to get some access to that uh, Tennessee passing game here. They should be able to score at will. Uh, in this matchup. So chop, let's go to the betting markets. I did not have a total. I think that's got to do with Stafford for some reason. Uh, there was a spread though. So we'll just go with that. We got Tennessee minus 10 and a half. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming Stafford's out. This, this is all contingent on Stafford. So uh, if when Stafford gets ruled out, I think Tennessee really rolls them up. I'm on Tennessee as well. Uh, even though I like that offense, it's more of a uh, playing from behind, racking up stats uh, in garbage time. I think Tennessee easily wins this one by two touchdowns plus. Derek, what do you got? Yeah, Tennessee. Tennessee. Mark it down on our little card here and move on to Jacksonville and Baltimore. Jacksonville, uh, tough loss in Tennessee. A uh, team kind of looks done for. They do get the return of the stash. Gardner Minshew uh, back in that lineup. So, uh, any interest in this Jacksonville offense chop playing from behind, likely Baltimore. Uh, we saw, like I said, game of the year, you know, that, that game in Cleveland, a uh, big favorites here. So my main question, what do we do with these running backs? I mean, JK Dobbins led the way in carries, but Gus Edwards finds the end zone two times, big home favorite, a good running back matchup, obviously against Jacksonville. who just got torched by Derrick Henry. Do you trust any of these guys enough or can you play multiple Baltimore running backs here? Uh, what are you doing here with, with these Ravens and the running backs? Yeah, a lot of angles to this game. It's tough. Uh, you know how – so short short week for Baltimore. Super emotional game, obviously, on Monday Night Football. Like, what do you – are they going to be in a letdown spot? Not that they're going to lose the game, but, you know, when you put this much money on your DFS guys, you, you pay 7500 for a guy or you or you pay some big dollars for a guy. You, put, you use a lineup spot on him. You don't want him to be – looking looking lifeless for a half a football out there you know for the first half while he recovers from the Monday night game so it's a tough spot but I mean you got to assume Lamar is going to play well again I like Marquise Brown here he got loose in the in the in the last minute of that game the other night and uh he looked good Mark Andrews made his return so I like the passing game here in this matchup if I did have a running back preference it'd be J.K. Dobbins he looked like he separated himself but 5,900 is a big pill to swallow for a guy who could very well, in the snap of a finger, go back to, like, splitting reps three ways with, with the other guys. So, uh, But I'm, I'm on the passing game here. And Jacksonville, the only interest – it's a really tough matchup. But at least Minshew's back. At least he may spark a guy like DJ Shark, who absolutely did nothing with the other quarterbacks. So maybe you get a little bit of life here from DJ Shark. James Robinson, he's been a stud all year long. You can play him. So uh, it's a tough matchup, but they're in play because uh, I think the quarterback change kind of sparks him a little bit. Spark the chark. I see what you did there, Chop. Well, well done. Like so uh, Derek's our resident Jags expert. I know he's, he's trying to separate himself from his team and he doesn't care anymore, but uh, no one here cares more about the Jags uh, than our boy Notorious. So break down those receivers. Uh, they all got a ton of targets. I mean, it was Keelan Cole last week leading away, but we saw Chenault uh, get a ton of targets. Chark was there too. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. So uh, it's been a, a scenario of we can't trust them because there's too many guys. So is it the same feeling this week? Baltimore, the running back situation, the Lamar Jackson, where is he on your quarterback rankings uh, and the rest of Jaguars Ravens? Jaguars side, uh, James Robinson. He's been a stud all year, uh, and he did have a touchdown called back and another long pass play called back. But uh, Dare Agumbawale ended up uh, playing 31% of the snaps last week. Uh, Azebo also got some snaps. So I'm worried about that a little bit. Baltimore's got a good run defense, especially with Clays, Campbell, and uh, Brandon Williams back. So probably won't be going there. I do like the chart call. Um, if you look at air yards per game compared to receiving yards per game, he has the biggest gap in the NFL. So he's getting a lot of targets downfield. He's just not doing anything with them. Maybe Minshew um, gets that going a little bit. And as we saw on Monday night, uh, Baltimore secondary, just full of injuries. So I will definitely keep an eye on that throughout the week. 
Uh, Ravenside, I mean, I've never seen so many poop jokes on Monday night on Twitter. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, <laughs> Nothing like a good poop joke. I mean, it, it never gets old. I mean, there were some good ones, but the, the Odell Beckham ones were a little too much for me. Um, <laughs> and anyway, uh, yeah, they're going to be able to attack this Jaguars defense any way they want. Uh, I like the passing game as well, but I do like Dobbins. You know, Mark Ingram only played one snap uh, last week. Dobbins played on 62% of the snaps. If uh, that happens again and he gets, you know, or anything close to 20 catches or 20, t- 20 touches, he'll uh, have a huge game against the Jags. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it's Dobbins. Again, it, it's that same kind of feeling with Taylor. I don't want to go all in on it, but uh, when you're building the player pool, uh, I think you definitely want to include him. Edwards, look good. He's going to get his touches, but for me, it's Dobbins uh, over Edwards. Derek, we got Ravens, big favorites here, as we'd expect, 13 and a half at home, uh, 46 and a half on the total. I'm going to take the over. I'm taking Baltimore. Uh, I just think they're clearly the much better team. Jacksonville, maybe they get a spark uh, with Minshew back, but I don't think that's going to be enough to keep this one close. Give me the Ravens. Chop, what do you got? Give me a little two-minute warning spread buster by Minshew. I'll I'll take Jacksonville with the points. All right, all over the board on that one. Next game, New England. uh, Tough, tough game out in L.A. Looked terrible. That whole offense looked bad. Uh, now you got Damian Harris questionable. We saw him leave that game uh, questionable with a back injury. So no other injuries on that side. Miami, this team is in shambles, guys. I mean, uh, injuries left and right. Uh, we saw Javante Parker leave that game, put up a zero. I know that hurt uh, a lot of people in DFS and season long uh, games in their playoffs. Mike Kosecki leaving that game, his injury not look good. Uh, we know Miles Gaskin on the, on the COVID-19 list. Uh, Salvin Ahmad still questionable. So uh, really nobody left. Preston Williams on the IR. So uh, Derek, it, it's going to leave guys like Adam Shaheen uh, in play. Lynn Bowden Jr. Uh, we saw the return of Mac Hollins, the return of the Mac uh, getting nine <laughs> targets. Even Antonio Callaway uh, back in our lives here. So uh, there's going to be some value here on, on this side of the ball. Do you trust any of these guys? This, this is potentially the lowest total we've had. Uh, all season long at, at 41 and a half yet the Dolphins still favored here uh, at home. So break down these Dolphins value pieces. I really think uh, there'll be something to get out of those guys. New England, it's tough for me to find anything I like here. What do you got? Pats, Dolphins. New England, uh, I agree with you. Um, according to 538, they have a 2% chance of making the playoffs. I don't think they're going to try to win games the rest of the way. Um, and Sonny Michelle's, you know, been getting work too. So hard to trust Damian Harris, even in a good matchup. Dolphins side, it's just hard to know at this point in the week um, with everybody questionable. Um, you know, Jasicki is expected to miss the game. So maybe you go to Shaheen, uh, but the rest of the guys, I don't have a strong take on them just because I don't want to do too much uh, of a deep dive into them. If uh, you know, Grant and Parker end up playing backfield, you got to like somebody there. Um, if there's some, if there's going to be a starter, so uh, pretty much a wait and see approach for me. All right. I mean, if they are all out, I, I think I lean to Lynn Bowden. I mean, he's, he's a guy that they can get creative with. Uh, we saw him throw a pass or t- actually tried twice. Uh, he's played some running back. Uh, he played quarterback in college. So uh, if anything, he's got more avenues to get there. So if that were to happen, uh, I prefer him over a guy like Collins or even Grant, if he plays, doesn't sound like he's going to be back, but a uh, situation to keep an eye on. If you're, if you're value hunting out there, uh, look to these Miami guys chop. Uh, same questions. Uh, let's pretend those guys are out. Uh, what are your thoughts on some of these value guys and anything on the New England side of the ball here? Nothing on the New England side. And, uh, yeah, you know, on the Miami side, it's unfortunate. Jacecki's out. I got I got two teams that that made it through on the underdog best ball championship. So I'm in the semis. I got two teams, and they both got Jacecki. So ah, damn, it's that unfortunate sucks. that he's yeah. going to – that that happened. But uh, – yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it and just watching the game last week when, when all that happened. Matt Collins was pretty involved, man, and, you know, he's got some experience. So, And I always thought he was okay in college and he just never really got a fair shake in Philly. So I guess maybe Matt Collins, but legit might not have a single player from this game in any lineup this weekend. All right, what about a bet? You got Dolphins minus two at home, low total at 41 and a half. Yeah, man, I like what the Dolphins are doing, and uh, I'll take the Dolphins. I like Miami as well. Uh, even if they are missing half their offense, their defense is playing electric. New England looks terrible. Uh, Dolphins for me. Derek? 
Bill Belichick has some unreal record against uh, rookie quarterbacks, so I'm going to take the under. All right, under it is, and we'll get to our last game here in the early window, San Francisco and Dallas. Uh, San Fran, a lot of injuries here as well. Jimmy Garoppolo will not be returning this week. I know there are some whispers. Uh, they're saying George Kittle may be back uh, soon. I don't think it'll be this week, uh, but keep an eye on that. Uh, Chop with the great Debo reference on Twitter. Well played, sir. Uh, Debo Samuel out. Uh, so that's going to mean a lot of targets uh, for Brandon Ayuk, who's just been a target monster here. You also got Raheem Mostert uh, listed as questionable. So what running back uh, do you want here, Chop, if you got to go with a San Francisco running back, Dallas side of things? Uh, they got the job done in Cincy, but it was mainly the defense. I mean, really nobody offensively uh, did much of anything. We saw the running backs kind of split the touches. Uh, the receivers didn't do a whole lot. So uh, trust anyone here. You're, you're our Cowboys expert here. So who in this offense do you trust uh, in this matchup against San Francisco? I, I don't trust anybody. Uh, I think that whatever they get, they're just in matchups like this, they're just barely scraping by to get it. So uh, I'm not particularly interested in, in, uh, in any, any of these Cowboy guys. If, if he had twist my arm, CD Lamb's at the top of the list just because it's easiest for him to get the ball the way he plays and the position he plays. So CD Lamb, but I'm not interested in, in these guys at all at this stage of the, at this stage of the game. San Fran, they're not much better with Nick Mullins, Nick Mullins as quarterback. He brings everybody down pretty bad. So, if I had to choose a running back, like you said, I, you know, Jeff Wilson's getting those goal line touches. So, Jeff Wilson's on the radar. I'll, I'll take Jeff Wilson. But Ayuk is the guy I have the most interest in in this game by a very wide margin. He was already seeing a lot of, a lot of targets, even with Debo coming back. And now Debo's probably out. And so, Ayuk is an explosive athlete, and he's the guy I want. Yeah, he's about the only guy I got out of this game as well. Uh, and, and Wilson would be the running back. It looks like he's the guy that, that they want to go to without Mostert. But uh, it's still a three-way committee. I know McKinnon really hasn't been involved, but uh, I don't really love any of them. I do love them. IU targets was big on him last week. Uh, Going to go back to that well. And uh, I agree. Dallas, it's hard to really trust anybody here. If it, get a cheap piece, uh, a lamb or a gallop maybe. But uh, all in all, Ayuk or Buster me here. Uh, in this one. Derek, your thoughts, Niners, Cowboys. If I have to choose a running back, I'm also playing uh, Jeff Wilson. Uh, if you look at the snaps, uh, Jerry McKinnon hasn't played more than 25% since week 10. Tevin Coleman hasn't played more than 10% in the snaps since week two. So I uh, got to think Wilson's going to be the guy. I agree on Ayuk. And I also don't mind Kendrick Bourne. Uh, he played 89% of the snaps last week. He's only 4,100. It is a good matchup. And for the Cowboys, uh, the last four weeks with Andy Dalton under center, uh, Michael Gallup actually leads the team in targets with 30. So at 3,500, I think you can take some shots on him in tournaments. All right, Derek, we got the Niners road favorites here, a minus three and a half, 45 and a half on the total. Oh, this one's tough. Uh, you guys go first. I don't have a strong take. I'm going to, I'm going to take the Cowboys here. Give me, give me the points at home. I don't think San Francisco, they've looked good in spots, but I, I don't think they're that good of a team. They're, they're missing a ton of guys and, uh, I think Dallas is playing with a little bit of confidence. They're still in the mix in that division somehow. Uh, I think they win this one. So I'll, I'll gladly take the points here with the Cowboys. Chop? Well, I mean, I said the same thing before Monday Night Football, so hopefully it doesn't happen again. But I just can't see that many points being scored in this game. So I'm going to take the under. All right, Derek. Back to you. Uh, I guess you made a case <laughs> for the Cowboys. <laughs> I'll ride with you, Bear. All right, riding we are, and we want to say thank you to our sponsor here of the pod this week, our friends at Manscaped, they're back, and I know a lot of you guys are out there looking for the ultimate stocking stuffer, you, you waited on your shopping, whatever it may be, well look no further because our sponsors at Manscaped have the tools to make you win this year's stocking stuffer gift or your white elephant competition, Manscaped, the only brand dedicated to below the waist grooming and hygiene products, and great news to all our fans across the world, we know we have our listeners in Europe, Canada, Australia. Well, guess what? Manscaped is bringing their products to you guys as well. So we've all had that time where something didn't go right uh, down below the way. So Manscaped is here to fix that. So a few of the products that are prime stocking stuffers this season include the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. The name speaks for itself. Uh, Chop and I will gladly vouch for that. It's a game changer. We both called it. Uh, great product there. The Crop Reviver Ball Toner 
a spray on toner that will give your balls a little slice of heaven with their aloe vera and hazel extracts. You also have the crop cleanser body wash, a full body wash that you can also use on your hair. Crop mop ball wipes. You never know when that opportunity can strike here around Christmas. So you want to always be prepared. Also have your feet covered. The foot duster foot deodorant designed to keep the stankiest feet smelling fresh. The Shears 2.0, a luxury four-piece nail kit. The Weed Whacker knows an ear hair trimmer, which provides proprietary skin-safe technology to get rid of those nasty nose hairs. And don't forget the best trimmer for your balls, butt and body, the Lawnmower 3.0. So these formulations are all vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, and paraben-free. And so you know their products are legit. So what do you got to do? To get 20% off and free shipping, all you got to do is go to manscaped.com, Use promo code ROTO, R-O-T-O. Thank you, Manscaped, for making our holes look sexy again. It's 20% off and free shipping. Promo code ROTO at manscaped.com. What are you waiting for? Go whack your weeds and make Santa proud. Guys, anything to add here in the Manscaped department? Oof, there's a lot. Number one, it's oddly arousing to hear you talk about the Manscaped ad. All like right. I, I like that. Know. Hey. But, you know, my <laughs> motto is you got to shave it if you want to wave it. So you got you to gotta do it, man. You got to do go. it. There you go. Spoken, spoken from a, a guy that uses the products. It is a good product. I mean, I, I use the stuff all the time. So, like I said, you got you to gotta keep things neat down right, there. Can I give you just a little just, – just, it's, not, it's not a huge, huge th- thing, but just a little bit of a, a little hack – the uh the ball deodorant if you just take like a little a little little spoon not a teaspoonful but just a little dollop on the end of your finger you put a little on, on your underarms at night then you've got the you it acts as a good de- deodorant for your underarms too and it, it makes you feel real it makes you smell really sexy in the bedtime under your arms also there you go i was gonna ask why do you have a spoon in the bathroom but <laughs> not uh, a spoon whoa, whoa. Yeah, just a little <laughs> i was thinking tablespoon but that's too much just a little dollop just hey, a little i want to ask what, what you do in the bedroom is, is your own uh <laughs> you do you man derek anything to add here in, in the manscape department before we move on Oh man, Chop deserves to be a brand ambassador. Uh, he's got the slogans. He's got all the good reviews. Um, I'm still waiting on the dome lawnmower because uh, I don't got any hair up top anymore. <laughs> well, there you go, Manscaped. Got to add that that dome lawnmower. But uh, let's move on. Let's get back to the football here. Uh, we'll wrap it up here on the DFS OGs pod. Thank you guys, as always, uh, for tuning in. We'll finish up with the three-game afternoon slate. Uh, we start out with the Jets and the Rams. Obviously, a, a very one-sided game here. Rams. Uh, huge favorites here. Uh, Jet side, LaMichael P. Ryan's back. Do we even give a damn about that? I doubt it. Uh, the Rams side, we finally saw the emergence of Cam Akers here. So his price is up to 6,600, Derek. Are uh, you comfortable paying that? Or are you going to avoid him coming off that big game? I think he's the big question here. We know Woods, Cup, those guys are going to get it done. But uh, what are you doing with Cam Akers? Cam Akers, uh, 70% of the snaps last two weeks, 22 and 31 touches. Uh, it seems like all these rookie running backs are finally starting to separate themselves from their timeshares. You got Akers, you got Dobbins, you got Jonathan Taylor, all three in good matchups this week. Uh, I think you can play all of them. Um, and the Jets, I know they're better against uh, the run than they are the pass, but this is just going to be such a lopsided game that I expect Akers to uh, have plenty of success here. Uh, we saw it last week with the Seahawks. Uh, it was a great spot for Russell Wilson and his receivers, but they just didn't do a ton because, you know, the game was so lopsided. So I like Akers, pair him up with the Rams defense. Jets, I mean, they're not even trying to rack up garbage time. They're like running the ball down 30 in the fourth quarter. So I will not be uh, chasing that. I fell for the Rashad Perriman uh, chalk last week, but I uh, won't be going back there. All right, Chop, anything on the Jets for you? And then uh, Cam Akers, same question, 6,600, yes or no? Yes, Cam Akers. I mean, he looks like he's taking it, man. He looks like he's getting getting uh, established as the number one guy. I mean, sure, it could be fool's gold, but you got to take shots on it in this kind of an offense. So, yeah, I'll take a shot on that. And uh, just from a you know selfish standpoint, it's it's Robert Woods for me this week. I got him in my home league right there in the first round. So I'm hoping Robert Woods has the big game. But Woods Cup, pick one. One of them's going to have a good game, I believe. So. Yeah, you're in good shape there. And to your Jets question, no, I'm, I'm, I'm. Even if Crowder comes back and they and he says I'm 100% healthy, I probably still wouldn't play anybody in this offense. It just doesn't, 
There's nothing there for me, so I'll pass. Yeah, I mean, you're really counting on garbage time uh, with those guys. So I, I'm out on the Jets as well. I, I like Akers in the spot. I think it's another spot where you want exposure to either him or, or some of those pass catchers, uh, Woods and Cup specifically. So Chop, Rams, uh, huge favorites as we'd expect. The number sitting at 16 and a half total at 44 and a half. Yeah, I got I to gotta take the Rams here. I'm going to go the under here. I, I just see the Rams winning uh, pretty easily, uh, running the ball in the second half. Uh, so uh, similar to last week, but maybe like a 28 to 3, 31 to 3, 31 to 10, all fall under that 44 and a half. So under for me. Derek, what do you got? I like the Rams and the under, but uh, for the purposes of this, give me the Rams. All right. Well, oh, what's this? Hold on. A little breaking news here into the pod. Oh, nice. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey will not, uh, is not expected to play on Saturday. So I know we hit on that in the beginning. So uh, Coach Matt Rule says Christian McCaffrey not likely back here. So another week of Mike Davis there for Carolina uh, in a good matchup uh, with Green Bay. So something to keep an eye on there for your Saturday slate. Let's get back to Sunday. Two games left here. Uh, Philly and Arizona next one up, uh, Arizona favorite here, as we'd expect, uh, Jalen hurts, uh, is the story here. I mean, played very well, uh, in that win against new Orleans we really saw him get it done on the ground, 106 rushing yards on 18 carries. Also saw Miles Sanders have a big game uh, outside of that though, the receivers, the tight ends, nobody really got anything going, uh, Arizona side, they got the job done in, in New York. Uh, Hopkins was good. Still have some questions about Kyler Murray chop. So that's where I want to start here. Uh, these quarterbacks, obviously the story of this game. Can we trust Kyler? Can we go back to him here against Philly? Uh, and then are you believing in Jalen Hurts? Uh, I know we kind of kind of said, stay, let's wait, let's see what happens last week. But uh, are you a believer and you like him in this matchup with Arizona? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I do not like him as, that much this week. I didn't like him that much last week and he was fine, but you know, I just don't know. I don't think he's going to be a quality NFL quarterback. Now, I think he's going to get away with it maybe for the foreseeable future because it's up to game plan this year like that. Like, you just can't can't in, implement too many game plans for a guy like that on a short week, especially this year. So maybe he gets away with it. Maybe I'm underselling him. But, uh, yeah, long term, I don't like him much. Maybe, maybe this week. But uh, Kyler Murray, the injury, can't go there. Kenyon Drake seems to kind of, kind of score a touchdown every week and bail himself out, but he's not particularly good either. DeAndre Hopkins is the guy I have the most interest in because this is a, one of those big prime bounce back spots, I believe. So I think DeAndre Hopkins gets it done. Um, I think Jalen Hurts kind of puts the squash on all of his receiving targets. No, I don't want Rager, Jeffrey, Ward. They're all healthy. I don't want any of those guys. Maybe Miles Sanders. He's an explosive guy, so maybe Miles Sanders. But, yeah, I mean – I don't know, man. I'm still 50-50 on Hurts. It's a tough call. I don't think he's good long term, but yeah, maybe maybe he's good short term though. So st- I'm still I'm still not sold. I I'm with you. I'm intrigued. I, I want to look into it more. I, I mean, the 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 total is you know one of the higher totals we have at 48 and a half. The Cardinals have given up the the six most rushing yards per game to quarterbacks, so they they haven't been good in that department. It's clearly something they want to do. Uh, 18 carries says they they want this guy to run the ball. So. I'm intrigued. I, I'm again. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look into it this week. So Derek, you're gonna push me over the edge here on Hertz. Uh, push me the other way. Whatever you want to do there. And same question. Uh, Kyler Murray in this Arizona offense. Are we just worried about this injury? Uh, do you feel comfortable going back to him here against Philly and the rest of Eagles and Cardinals? What do you got? For Kyler, you know, we've been worried about the injury, like you mentioned, but he did run the ball 13 times last week against the Giants. So I uh, definitely like that. He only had 15 rushing attempts in his previous three games. So I actually don't mind him. 7K is the cheapest he's been in a long time. I like pairing him up with DeAndre Hopkins. We've seen Darius Slay give up big games to Metcalf, Devonta Adams, and Michael Thomas in three straight weeks. So I actually like that pairing quite a bit. Going to be staying away from the running backs. And then uh, a lot can change from Tuesday to Sunday. I actually ended up playing a little bit of Hurts just because he was so cheap and I wanted to force in, you know, Derrick Henry and Devonta Adams last week. So I ended up, uh, you know, doing pretty good uh, over the 100 yards. Um, It was kind of crazy. The Saints hadn't given up a 100-yard rusher, and I can't remember the exact number, but a long time, and then they gave up two to Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders last week. So I don't mind going back to Hurts. He's a little bit more expensive this week. Uh, And Miles Sanders finally got the 81% snap share again, so, you know, maybe he's going to be the guy uh, to close out the season. But 
Yeah, it's just kind of tough uh, to trust a team that just wants to run the ball. Uh, they're probably going to be trailing in this one. So I would choose Hurts over Sanders if uh, having to choose. All right, Noto, we got Cardinals minus six and a half and 48 and a half on the total. I'll go uh, Arizona at home here. And uh, <laughs> for the listeners out there, props to Bear. I mean, we don't have a producer. That was uh, that was all him doing the breaking news alert. Yeah, I got to throw a little little curveball in there once in a while, but I uh, got to keep the peeps updated. So I appreciate that. Chop, uh, I'm going to wait here. I don't really have anything that stands out in this game. So let's get your pick here, and then I'll throw something in. Yeah, this is a really tough one right here. So uh, I'll take the over, I guess. I, if Hurts is for real, then they should score some points, and I'll take the over. Uh, I'll take Philly in the points here. We'll see. We'll see. I, I think this is a test going on the road. Uh, it's not like it's a tough environment without fans, but uh, it's still a, a road game. So I, I uh, nothing stand. I'm I'm just gonna go Philly. Not nothing really stands out there. So. Uh, speaking of the Saints, they will wrap us up here at home against Kansas City. I mean, a potential Super Bowl preview here uh, in this one. So really looking forward to this game, Kansas City. Uh, we saw it get off to a slow start in Miami. Mahomes throws a couple picks. Everyone's freaking out. And then they do what they do. Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, uh, both have big games here. We even saw uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire get, get involved in the passing game. So uh, as always, Kansas City, pretty simple. Uh, which guys stand out more than the others here against New Orleans? Uh, Saints side, tough loss uh, in Philly. Uh, Hill and Thomas did their thing. Kamara uh, continues to kind of lag at, at, even at that discounted price. So thoughts there. I uh, don't think Drew Brees will be back. Uh, they're kind of being cautious on him. So expect another week of Taysom Hill here. So, no, no, let's wrap up week 15, buddy. Chiefs and Saints. Saints, like you mentioned, I don't think Drew Brees will be back. But if he is back, then you just lock in Alvin Kamara. Um, he's just so good with Brees under center. And he actually had 10 targets last week uh, with Taysom. So uh, maybe it's a spot to play him. Uh, he's pretty cheap. It's a really good matchup against Kansas City. They're one of the worst run defenses in football. Uh, and then I don't mind Taysom Hill and Michael Thomas. Um, he just continues to look at him time and time again. Uh, just needs to find the end zone, and he'll end up having a big week. For the Chiefs, we've talked about it a bunch of times on this podcast. We prefer them in a difficult matchup because the game's going to be competitive. They're going to keep their foot on the gas. The problem is that uh, Mahomes, Hill, and Kelsey are all the most expensive players at their respective positions. So you're going to have to pay a pretty penny for them, uh, but they're all in great spots. Plus, it's in a dome. I like the stacks for sure. Um, and then CEH did play 74% of the snaps. Um, Le'Veon Bell went on Twitter and uh, wasn't too happy about it. So uh, you know, maybe CEH is the guy moving forward. I mean, 8K on Kelsey, That's he's lapping yeah. the field. I mean, 5,500 is your next highest tight end. So uh, I, I wanna, I'll keep an eye on the ownership, but we'll see if people want to go there. We know people always want to play Kelsey. Uh, that is a huge gap, though. So uh, interesting there. Chop, uh, what do you got here? We know Kansas City. Uh, we know the pieces there. So does one stand out over the rest for you? Uh, Saints side, who you like? And Taysom, Thomas, Kamara, Chiefs, Saints, what do we got? Yeah, it's a game of the week for not only real life, but fantasy also. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I got a, this is, it's going to be a tough week for me in the old home league, man. This guy's got Patrick Mahomes, so I, I could be in trouble here. But like uh, Notorious summed it up, those are all the best players at their position, Mahomes and Tyreek and Kelsey, but they're all priced appropriately. So that's, that's not an easy sell right there. But those are the three I'm interested in on that side and really nobody else. I, I don't want to go Clyde edwards Lair here or any of those secondary wide receivers. So it's the big three or it's nothing. And then on the Saints side, yeah, man, it's tough to trust Kamara inside. They're just so much better with Breeze there. So, but you can still play them in this matchup because it should be a back and forth game. It's like they've got this, uh, first of all, Taysom's looking a little bit better passing the ball. I give him a little bit of credit there, but there's like a real race there in the NFC because the, the number one seed has probably never been as important as it is this year. And there can only be one bye week and all that. And they're in, they're in a dog fight with Green Bay. So New Orleans has got to – they're throwing everything, you know, to get these wins these last few weeks. So, And Kansas City still needs to lock up their number one seed. So it, this should be a great game. And, I mean, you could go any which way you want to in this game. There's going to be some fireworks, I think. Yeah, I mean, this is the one people are going to stack. So just, just get creative. It can be expensive to, to stack. That's where you may need some of the value that we've talked about along the way. But uh, I'm really excited for this game, uh, both daily fantasy-wise and just to sit back and watch it. So uh, let's get our last betting pick here, Chop. 
Kansas City minus two and a half total at 50 and a half. Got to take the over. I'm going Chiefs here. I, I just they're, they're on a roll right now, and uh, New Orleans uh, certainly looked vulnerable last week. Uh, even in the dome, I think the Chiefs win this one. So give me Kansas City minus the two and a half. Derek. I like both your picks, but give me Kansas City. All right. I think that only leaves us to uh, consensus, if I'm uh, keeping track correctly. We're all on the Bears and the Titans. So a little, little, little two, two-teamer to put in. Those are a little bit more, uh, more risk-averse than, than some of the big parlays we've been putting together. So Bears, Titans are consensus picks here against the spread. Guys, final thoughts. Chop, I want to go to you. We got to get uh, the season-long update. The playoffs are here. You mentioned Mahomes in the matchup. How does the rest of the matchup look? It's rough this week. It's rough. It's going to take a, it's going to take a, a big game out of me. It's going to take some very fortunate turn of events. The man, my man's got Mahomes and he's got Derrick Henry. That oh might boy. be the two man combination. <laughs> that might be all you need to win this year, the way it's going. So, I've got to, I've got to dodge those two somehow. And I need, I need a big game. You know, it's all going to come down. I mean, I'm either going to be live after the Thursday game or I'm not because I got Justin Herbert going. So. If Herbert can put up a big one and kind of neutralize Mahomes, I'm in good shape. If he comes out and lays a dud like he has the past couple of weeks, I'm going to be packing it in early, man. So we'll, I'll be I'll be all up in that Las Vegas uh, Atlanta or Las Vegas and Chargers game this week. Well, according to my projections, you're down a hundred to nothing to, to Mahomes and Henry before <laughs> am, before man. you even start, Legit. man. That that is a that's a tough draw there. And, but... and you, you, you know, I, I've said this about like football for years, like one bounce of the ball here or there in week 15 and all of a sudden the Super Bowl champion is different, right? Like, like last year, I think it was Miami that, or well, I don't know, Miami knocked out New England from the number one seed, KC got it or something crazy like that, right? You just, those weird turn of events. And in this one, I got matched up in this one because I lost last night by one point. I got beat by one point or else these matchups are different and I'm playing a guy with a lot less firepower. So Man, that could be just that one point in week 14, maybe the thing that swings you to a Super Bowl or not. So I don't know, man. It's it's so true. I mean, I, I had one I lost by point four uh, in a playoff matchup. I had another one I needed like 15 points out of Deontay Johnson, Eric Ebron, and James Conner against Buffalo. I had all three of them going. Uh, they put up about 12 or something combined. So it happens. So we're, we're rooting you on. Hopefully uh, we're talking finals next week chop so any final thoughts dfs wise favorite plays favorite stacks anything like that yeah you know i I just uh i'm feeling like a really nice stack in that new orleans kc game if you can get it i think there's going to be a lot of value out there by the time we kick off and uh yeah i don't know man that's where i'm going and you can you can do that there's we got a nice little 11 game slate so it's not like last week where we had the majority of the teams going so we can like uh, i don't know man tough i don't really that's the game that really stands out to me i feel like i'm gonna put the late night hammer on him but it's the late afternoon hammer there you go the old late night hammer i, I do miss the late night hammer no doubt but uh derek let's go to you uh final thoughts here any favorite plays favorite stacks uh whatever stands out here for week 15 uh just a funny story you know we mentioned that monday night game where the safety ended up uh you know pushing the spread uh, it was three or three and a half in some places and uh, the Ravens got the safety to push it to five. But uh, my father-in-law doesn't really get the whole fantasy thing, but he called me right when it happened and just was like, how much money did people lose on this? And <laughs> I just thought it was pretty funny because even he just realized it. And uh, so, yeah, that was funny. And then uh, for my favorite stack of the week, it's not your traditional stack. It has absolutely zero correlation, which is always what you want to build into your lineups. Um, give me the rookie running back stack of Jonathan Taylor, J.K. Dobbins, and uh, Cam Akers. All right. I like it. I mean, the last few Millie makers have no, no, no correlations, no nothing, <laughs> double tight ends. I mean, go, flying against all the rules. So uh, I like all three of those guys this week. I, I'm going to go to that Chicago, Minnesota game. I, I think there's multiple ways uh, you can stack it up and run a running back on the other side. Either way, uh, both passing games, certainly viable here. So uh, that's a game I certainly have circled here, Chicago and Minnesota. So that will wrap us up. For week 15, guys, thank you again for listening in and sticking with us all season long. Again, we have some big news coming. Please stay with us for that. As soon as we have more details, uh, we'll be happy to pass that along. But uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. If you enjoy this show, 
uh, you'll enjoy what we got uh, moving forward. So excited about that. So for Notorious, for Head Chopper, I am Beer saying salut. Best of luck here this week, guys. Uh, if you want to go rate and do the pod, please do. We don't beg you for that. There's a lot of shows, but uh, it's always appreciated. Good luck. We'll see you next week, guys.